first video of talking about the shows from the 80s first. We're going to go through some well, different... my favorite shows from the 80s, actually. 80s, yes. A first video with them. We're going to talk about um, our, fav our favorite parts of the show, but then again, the first one is not really my favorite, but I'll let him explain about him, about it. His, fa his first it's favorite on the... First part from the bottom to the top. I know, but the top is better that way, plus it's the 80s. Okay. I and mean, when it comes to, you know, right... The top 10 shows in the 80s. So. I know. Like, what should I call them? That's the way they do it. They count down from 10 to 1. Alright, alright, to 10, then 10 to 1. The first show we'll talk about is Gem and the Holograms. I first fell in love with this show when I was about 13 years old because, A, I was watching things on YouTube and I loved the music. I started copying, I mean, practicing and singing the songs and, well, learned some of the lessons. I loved the show because, well, I loved. Season 3 was one of my favorites, plus the dynamic between, um, well, Jim and, of course, the, the, you know, I mean, the Stingers, Stink Ding, Stingers, but Riot, of course. Yeah. yeah. Well, this, yeah the show basically focuses on Jericho, who leads a double line as the rock star sensation, Jim. The only ones who noted, noted Jim and Jericho at the same person, who are... Her fellow holograms, her sister, Kimber, and uh, two friends slash adopted Sister Shona and Aja. Songs were very creative in their own way, but some of them became like a little mm -hmm. bit of, well, soft bread to most fans. But to me, I grew up with the music, and I grew up with the songs. And then for the Jim and the Holger movie, that movie stinks. I'd rather watch the show than the movie mm -hmm. any day. You know, it's not... I don't me or trying to keep the fact that church when then these are the same person from my boyfriend real it wouldn't be it except the main rivals the misfits yeah the misfits now yeah. cool. the last episode of see the last episode was my favorite was when Gem and the Hogan went to help to find Bonnie's m father and they didn't yet, yep. and I love that, and, and it was just adorably, plus, I have a strong father-daughter bond with my father. Next show is Mask, and I know nothing about it, so I'll let Jaco talk about Mask. As an act. Go ahead. You can see it's an acronym. It says, well, Momo Armored Strike Command. It's about a ship. It's basically about, you know, people who go around the world and threats holding vehicles, and when... Masks with special powers. The leader is Mac Tracker, who rides a flying car called Thunderhawk. They basically follow the plans of their enemies, Venom, which stands for Vicious Evil Network of Mayhem, and by Mild Mayhem, who rides main transportation. He has a helicopter called Switchblade that transforms into a jet. Basically, each character rides around in the vehicle. Well, that transforms into another vehicle. For example, there's one that, there's a motorcycle that has a helicopter mode. As well as a truck that converts into a van. So, basically, we need here all have different abilities. And each mask has its own special ability to do. Well, that's my Jayco. He's most informed about anything. And like me, we're both researchers. <laughs> like many shows at the time, it was based off a toy line. Throughout the first season, the agents of Venom were unaware of the identities of the agents of Mask. The first season went for 65 episodes, while the second only went for 10, and in that season, some of the agents of Venom know who the agents of Mask are. Questions as to how they found out. If you want to learn more, more about the show, just look it up on Wikipedia or watch the episode on YouTube 
And so the next show is Smurfs. And I grew up with the Smurfs because, well, they were little blue people. I mean, come on. I could not love, I love, my favorite one is, well, this Papa Smurf, he's my favorite. Plus, he wears red. The reason why I grew up with them is because they were tiny little blue people that used magic to survive in a little bit away from Gargamel who wants to eat them or use their magic. And Gargamel was just a ridiculous yeah. wizard. Even, Gargamel always gets the worst of it. So yeah, Gargamel wants to either destroy the Smurfs, eat them, or use them in the gold formula. That is quite true, Dad. That is quite, quite true, my love is. Along with Papa Smurf, how many mobile Smurfs are Smurf Ed, Grouchy, Effie, Handy, Jokey, Lazy, Wendy, Wayne, Grandpa, and the Smurf Ladies? Smurf Ed was my favorite one because, well, she was the girl of the group. She was the only female, yep. besides the kid Smurf Ed that came in later on. That's it. She was made the same way by the Smurflings, one a girl their age. Oh, I didn't know that. Good fact. Very good fact, my love. I actually have all nine seasons of Smurfs on DVD. I can such very awesome. What a smart lad he is, isn't he? In any yeah, case? Smurfs working on Cartoon Network <laughs> as well. Although it was maybe the later seasons that they aired, not the first ones. Next on the list is Alvin and the Chipmunks. Oh yeah, I love the Alvin and the Chipmunks. They're all my favorite. Theodore and He's Alvin and Simon. Yeah. So, so this is the show that they say introduced their female counterparts, the Chipette. First of all. <laughs> Simon is the smart one, Fedor is the cute chubby one, and Alvin is the crazy yet crazy leader of the group. I love their singing as much as I as much as, did, as much as Jaco did when we were little. And my favorite story was when, well, they were fine by Mr. Seville. In the end, they become big stars. And now, oh, Jaco. Yeah, it was. Oh, and Jaco, it's your turn. So yeah, and if it's not helping the Chibok Sudek career, okay, 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 okay. Yeah. Should, uh, on, the Chibok's career, he has to put up with Alvin's constant antics. Oh, yeah. While well, Alvin and Brittany have a rivalry for popularity, Simon and Peter have no trouble getting along with their Chibok panel part. Nope, that's true. <coughs> Bless me. Uh, Sorry about that. In any case, <laughs> the chip beds were my favorite. My favorite was finally that they came from Australia. Like my boyfriend came from Australia. Yep, basically the origin story. It was very adorable. I hated it. I hated the person Amazing. who took care of him, though. If you want the chip bed, start off. Like the regular chipmunk, and somehow it had grown into the size of the human child. Uh, the strangest thing, I've always wanted to know who was a chipette's mother and father. I mean, we know about Alvin, we know about Al Alvin's mother, but what about the chipette's parents? Who were they? And how did they end up in Australia? If any of you have, if any of you fans of the show have any ideas, please put it down in comments in below our video. Now for the next one is Thundercats! Thunder, Thunder, Thundercats! Line out the leader, Chitara, Tigra, Panthro, and the two cute little, cute little twins, and of course... Well, right, love, and of course Snarp. I love Snarp. Is that a Snarp sound like, Snarp, 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 I don't want this. I don't like this at what? all. Let's get back to Thundera. <laughs> Much to his jargon. Well, yeah, they're basically a living race of humanoid like cats to make their home on the third earth. That is true. Uh, and usually find themselves fine against Mumra and Mumra, the ever living evil! <laughs> the thing was, when Lionel was on the ship from to third earth, he was the same age as Kip and Cap. But unfortunately, due to the fact of space travel, he turned way into adulthood. 
Ash for is too well, low. I think that the other one can't be affected too. But why no pod? Yeah, I know. That's the strangest part. Kip and Captain didn't ever grow up to adulthood. They just stayed young little kids. And again, that was always very weird. Which is why the others are still the same age as they were when they entered the pod. It's very weird, but then again, Thundercatch, no explanation, it is a cartoon. There's a car yep. cartoon to never have any reasons. And as and for other enemies, the Berserkers and the Lunatics. Oh yes, those guys. And Mamma. Kumaira, the nurse, the blind Jed brain Musa, and Bengali, who's basically a blind Greek, a lot of Tigra. Also in some of the ver some of the episodes we find we see that uh Le Lionel has a has a mentor who is very old and very white. He sometimes shows up yeah. in a different realm. He basically guides Lionel guides Lionel to how Kaya to from Lion Guard gets advice from his grandfather. Oh yes, we'll talk about that show a different time though, love. Anyway, we also see some enemies from from his father's past too. And he was once a great friend <laughs> to Panthro. You know who I'm talking about, you're the one with the info. Mm. X Yes. Bang. That's my Jago. He's my other half of me. So yeah, Brew is... He's got a reboot in the early 2000, in the 2010s. We'll talk about that show in a different time, honey. Right now, we're talking about this show. Stay to the rules, love. That's my Jago. Yep. Hit up a party animal, come to the research. Mm -hmm. <laughs> in any case, next show would be... Unfortunately, I don't know that much about Voltron Defenders of the Universe. I only watched a few of them it, when I was in high it, school. I think it's an example of what Power Rangers would be if there was an m and series. The story follows a group of space explorers, King, Lance, Hunk, Hitch, and Sven, who travel to the planet Earth and a mighty robot named Voltron, who's born by five lions. The black lion, who owns the head and main body, the red and green lions, who form the arms, and the blue and yellow lions, who form the legs. He, even though he wears red, pilots the black lion. Uh, no, he didn't. Oh, that noise in the background was, <laughs> um, Kathy, Jaco's sister. As I was saying, lions, even though he wears blue, he it's the red lion. Sven, you know, he wears black, but it's the blue. It's Hulk and Pidge who are in the same color as their respective lions. Hulk, he pilots the yellow, while Pidge pilots the green. Keith is the leader of the group, Lance is the hot shot. Hulk, he's the big muscle of the group, as well as the mechanic. And Pidge, the he's the smartest as well as the smartest. Mm -hmm. And Sven, he has born X. I'm not sure what's wrong here. And of course, the the their adventure is protecting the planet Era, science princess, Salora. Exactly. Who has. A, and unfortunately, has a, unfortunately there is a prince from an elf war that has a crush on her. He tends to try to get the princess, but the, every time the princess always beats him with her friends. In the end, yep. he is one of those evil villain dictators who wants to rule the princess at his side. We've heard this story so yep. many times before. And that sounds like a plan that Dark wants to do. So what? This one princess to a rock part. Mm. Dark wants you realize that if he marries his son to the only heir to the throne of Eren, the Lord only hold up and leave him. Playing and without him to fight the whole one force. And sure, he be king. But they were, <laughs> but they were always stuck. They always stop that punk, just punk. So that prince yeah. is no prince, he's just some dumb jerk. That's what's then? He ends up being... getting injured by the can... the witch Hagar, and ends up being replaced by Aurora. I actually got interested in the show after seeing the trailer story. And, just to let you know, the lions of Voltron are the same color as the rings on the Olympic flag. 
as usual, Draco. Very informative. Next show we talk about is He-Man and the Master of the Universe and She-Ra, Princess of Power. And unfortunately, I know nothing of this show once more because I grew up with the He-Man from the 2000s version. And unfortunately, this is the 80s. This is the original He-Man show. Right. So, Jacob, you talk about it then. Yeah. Basically, the show called The Adventures of Adam, Prince of Eternity, and Defender of the Secrets of the Castle Grayskull. The Castle Grayskull. And is accompanied by his great tiger, Granger, who's a bit of a coward. Although one of the patrol guys raises his voices by the power of Grayskull and transforms into a He Man. And Granger becomes Battle Cat. Only three people share this secret the sorceress of Grayskull, Man at Arms, and Orko. And also. Here's one small little tip you should know that I at least know. The one that gave her the, the one that gave He Man the power is actually the mother of Prince Aaron's good friend and the daughter of Man at Arms. A small a small little, a small little tip for me. That's yes. all. Yes, people did find that out, but her memory, but her memory of them information was erased. Sad, really. I was hoping to see more of that. Yep. And like, uh, the, 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 like the new show, and you know, and, and, and I like the Grace Girl from the Evil Forces of Skeletor. Oh yes. Of course, huh? that's basically a spinoff of He-Man. We know the show love. She-Ra was, she was a twin sister to Aaron, but unfortunately was and removed from the removed Adam. from the. Adam. Adam. Sorry, Adam. sorry, 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 honey. Oh, yeah. Adam Prince. Adam. Jago, could you let me please just once? Sorry. Hmm. Prince Adam and Shiva were once brother and sister twins of the young kingdom. Unfortunately, one of the enemies of the king kidnapped poor little Shiva and raised her as his own daughter or a servant. But even later on, I've seen the pilot movie for Shiva, and she was told of the good side. You may go on, honey. That's Basically, her drone is real. Her real name is Zora. She was basically raised by Hordak, Skeletor's mentor, and ended up becoming one of the commanders of the Horde by the planet Furia. After learning of her true origin, she became she ra and her more spirit, she became the Alec, born on the Swiftwing. Oh, yeah. the, 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 the rebels of Furia, they saw with the fleet plan from Hordak and his goons. Very true. When I saw the blighter, I said, Ew, who wants to marry that creepazoid? Yuck. But yeah, hoarders. Ugh. What a creep. Oh, excuse, that was gorgeous in the background. Not Gia. Gia doesn't bark that loudly. She's just snoozing. In any case, next show is, and it's my turn to talk about this show, Chip and Dale Rescue Agent was a show back in the 80s and through the 90s where two twin, two twin best friends from the start, they were friends with, let's see now, um, Mar Monty, Zipper, and of course, their gadget, Love and Female Gadget, and they worked together as a team to solve mysteries and save those who were in danger of Fat Cat, Professor Nimble, and other such dangers of the villains and the corrupt yes. the world. So basically, there were so many episodes of the show, but as you know, there was the um, parties fun guy, and yes, Chip was, was the, the researcher guy, the leader, and of course, the one takes control of everything. But hey, he has to be there for Dale. And, well, he has a crush, he has a crush on Gadget. And of course, Monty they has his do. love and cheese loving, like I do. Like he would have just. <laughs> And he would go crazy. He would like float up in the air and smell the cheese and Zippo tried to zap him out of it. <laughs> go on, Jaco, your turn. Well, yeah. it seems to the difference between Chip and Dale. Chip, being the chocolate chip like no. Then he wore an outfit similar to Indiana Jones. Or Dale, he's easily identified by his butt teeth and big red nose. And he wore a Hawaiian, Hawaiian shirt. This was the show that basically got me into those cheeky little chipmunks. As for me, it's I just... It's not the bad guys, it's not a lot. It's mostly a group. It's Dale's antics. 
But as for me, I enjoyed Chip and Dale cartoons when I was little. Just a little short of Donald. And, but when I just saw the show, I liked it very much. I liked most of the episodes, but my favorite episode would always be the the bat one, where Dale finds his own little girlfriend. Fox Glove, as Jago just said. Yes, Fox Glove. I want to see more of it. I want to see more of them together. But hey, at least there's shippers out there shipping into. Am I right, love? Shippy, shippy, shippy. <laughs> yep. I've seen some fan art of those, too. In any case, next is Transformers Generation 1. It was the first generation series. I actually watched it during high school when I was like, well, getting into the fandom as it were. I was already into Transformers when yeah. watching Transformers Armada, Transformers Cybertron, and of course Transformers, um... Energon, those three were my favorites. Go on, Jayco. Yeah. I basically got into this series after watching the movie associated with it. The one uh, that introduced Unicron. Unicron, the evil monster planet that can gobble you up. Watching the original show allowed me to get to know the various characters that would appear in the film. Now, here are my favorite characters. From the Autobot side, Optimus Prime, Bumblebee, Ratchet. Dan, and Homelock. From the Decepticons, Megatron, Soundwave, Laserbeak, and Starscream. As for my favorites, they were Bumblebee, and of course, Optimus Prime, Grimlock, because I like dinosaurs, and Jazz. Those so are my I. favorites. And of course, they had human helpers, too. Yep. Mainly Spine, his father Sparkplug, and his girlfriend Carly. Which actually... Mm -hmm. Which actually, you should know that Sparkplug is actually a name of a minicon that belongs to Sparkplug from Transformers Armada. It belongs to Up Me. No, yes, no, no, no. Optimus, no, honey. Optimus Prime had a minicon that was in Optimus that was in Transformers Armada. And his yes. name was Sparkplug, which was inspired from the name Sparkplug as in Spike's father. You should watch the show, honey. Transformers yes. Armada is awesome. Armada. That's what I said. In addition, the appearance is a homage to Bumblebee. Exactly. That's another reason why I love Bumblebee. Although, compared to Bumblebee to Hotshot, I would say Bumblebee has a bit more adventurous to him. Although, Bumblebee, although Hotshot is Hotshot in the head. <laughs> in any case, yeah, we do see Car we do see Carly and Spike being together. But also, there was one episode that kind of got me confused. Can a human date a Transformer? Can they really do that? Can they actually do that for a while? Get, get out of it. Yeah, that was my sister. She said they can't date, but they can't get anything out of it. Well, they could date, but I don't know what y'all feel on that one, do. Once again, that was Kathy, Jacob's sister. One day I will draw a picture of her pony form for now. She's just back around from the other side. Thanks for the comment, Kathy. And yeah, as my as you as you, as you now know, my boyfriend tends to talk over me like I do to him, but hey. We're like, we're the same size as the same coin. Mm -hmm. The last show would be his honor to talk about because I never liked the Trent. I never liked the Teeny Ninja Turtles series of 1987. I've only liked the, well, the uh, Fox Kids one, the darker one. So you go on, yeah. talk about the show, honey. You go. It was basically my favorite, sh my first favorite show when I was a kid. I basically grew up watching the first four seasons of the show. Like many of the characters, the Turtles, April, and Splinter, and Shredder, and Hank, or Shredder's Bump, Blue Bucket, Henchman, Bebop, and Rocksteady, that come into the show. No matter how hard they try, they just do beat the Turtles and get the Tegman drone to New York, or at least successfully use the Tegman drone. Later, I found out that the show went for a total of 10 seasons, and it took me 10 years. 10 years! I get all this series on DVD. I see. Then, most of that, I'm watching the other six seasons on YouTube. You have to gain the first four on DVD. As for my. Go ahead. So, for the first eight seasons, the turtle. We'll put up the index of Shredder and Crane. Well, in the final two seasons, a new villain called Dread, voiced by Tony J. So I'm proposing Frollo. Another character. We know about him. Evil. 
So yeah, Tony Day did a very good job with Drake. And of course, the animation. And he changed for the turtle. So, and the sky was made red because in fancying the last three seasons, the red skies. And the turtles gained a new ally in a human named Carter. Who unintentionally gave a mutant form early on in season eight. I mean, in season nine, sorry. So yeah, the final three seasons only went for eight episodes. That is true once more. He's really full mm. of it. The intelligence that is. All right, folks. I believe that's the end of our round. So from me, from right, bros. Hello in there. And from Jacob. See you last part, honey. Till next time. Hello. Okay. For the next video, folks. Adios, everybody. Also, pizza, baby. <laughs> okay, my brony watchers. Remember to subscribe to my channel. And remember, there's always more with me than meets the eye. Or, should I say, more than meets a white rose. Night, folks. <laughs>